in miracles. Well, welcome back, everyone. I believe I'm the best person to lead Labor back into government. Let's cut to the chase. We got it wrong. Wow. You know, I don't hold a hose, mate, and I, I don't sit yeah. in the control room. It's been confirmed that a new virus can be passed from person to person. 2020 will be the toughest year of our lives. It is very serious. It is deadly serious. Every day that goes past from here gets more normal. It's not a race. Right? It's not a competition. The grand slam of pandemic failure. We will get through this together. Every one of us has to hold a hose. That was a political problem. Every voice matters. I will not let you down. Today, we join our nations in the next generation patch. I don't think I know. Now we want to put the past two years behind us. We need to put this government behind us. There's no one to help. Have a look at all the rubbish. It has taken everybody by surprise. Everyone has a role to play. This election is about you. I'm ready. We are ready. It's 6pm on the east coast of Australia and we are live from the ABC's election centre in Sydney. Three years ago, Scott Morrison declared a miracle when he delivered a third term in government for the coalition. Since then, COVID, floods and fires have upended all our lives and tonight we'll find out whether Australians have had enough upheaval or whether a change of government is next. Better days are now ahead. Labor leader Anthony Albanese has spent a lifetime in politics, but has he done enough at the end of this campaign to convince Australians he has what it takes to lead the country? I know Labor can do better and I know Australians deserve better. Scott Morrison is behind in the polls. He has been all year. If he pulls off a victory, he'll be the first Prime Minister in 18 years to win back-to-back -back elections. I'm seeking a second term because I'm just warming up. It's a race to 76 seats in the majority government, precisely where the coalition starts tonight, where Labor needs to gain seven seats for government in its own right. Polls on the East Coast have now closed, counting has begun, and soon the results will be in as Australia votes. Welcome to Australia Votes. This is one of the most unusual elections ever in Australia. There are so many unprecedented elements and so many variables that it would be a bold person who'd make a firm prediction right now. The opinion polls have Labor very comfortably ahead, but they did in 2019 as well. So the question is whether they can be trusted this time around. We'll help you make sense of it all over the coming hours, of course, with the help of our indispensable ABC Chief Election Analyst, Anthony Green. Anthony, where do we start tonight? Well, I was going to start with a chamber, but I'll start with this. It's Norfolk Island. And the reason is, Norfolk Island in the last decade has been added to Australia and is now part of the ACT election of Bean. And for the first time ever, we've gone to air at 6 p.m. and we've had election results. Now, I don't think the result from Norfolk Island is very indicative of Bean, let alone the whole country, but just it's always nice to know that we've got results coming in. But I'll go back to what I was going to do, which is to show the chamber the starting position for tonight's coverage. Uh, the House of Representatives, there's the chamber of the House of Representatives. We'll fill it in with our starting position for this election. We are starting with these numbers. 76 for the Coalition. They've lost the seat in Western Australia. Uh, we've, but we've included Hughes, which is Craig Kelly's seat as a Coalition seat. So 76, and that's the minimum you need 
for government in, to govern with a majority in the House of Representatives. Labor has 69, one up, again, due to redistributions. There's one Green and five others. Labor needs seven seats on a swing of about 3.5% for majority government. The Coalition need to hang on to everything they got. They need to win back Hughes for a start, hang on to what they hold, maybe catch another seat from the Labor Party if they do lose some seats. We could see seats going both ways, or if you believe news polls this morning, most of the action will be towards the Labor Party. But that's why we're here tonight, is to actually see the numbers, to watch them unfold and find out what the result is. Thank you, Anthony. Talk to you soon. With me here tonight are two of the most senior politicians in Parliament, Liberal Simon Birmingham and Labor's Tanya Plibersek. And we'll trust them to be frank and forthright with their opinions tonight, please. Um, let me start by asking each of you the same thing to start, which is just simply, what have you been hearing today from your colleagues, from volunteers, from just people out there? What are they telling you, Simon Birmingham? Well, Lee, uh, people have been overwhelmingly positive and polite, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's indicative of the result. I've seen and heard that on polling booths before. Um, Australians uh, engage, I think, with great responsibility in, uh, in Election Day, and they do so, generally speaking, with a, a care and a regard for uh, the booth workers and the volunteers who've been out there in sunshine in some parts of the country and torrential rain in other parts of the country. But Overall, it, uh, it certainly doesn't feel like they've been uh, the quintessential baseball bats out there. It's, uh, it's been a case where the voters going through have often known their minds, but they've been friendly and polite in doing so. Tanya? Oh, yeah, I agree with Simon that people have been friendly and polite. I, I have sensed a real um, it's time for change feeling. I've been in my own electorate of Sydney today, going from booth to booth. Uh, very long queues, people very keen to vote, uh, even with the big numbers in pre-poll. I was amazed at how long the queues were and, um, I mean, in my electorate at least, a, a very strong sense that it's time for a change. All right, we'll come back to you.